On drop rate is a series where I can only receive an item within its wiki stated rate, but with a twist. If I receive the item before or on its rate, I get to keep everything earned during the episode, including the desired item. However, if I do not end up getting it, I have to forfeit all the loot earned to you guys, the viewers. Let's introduce today's challenge. In the most northern part of Varlamor, a new cave has emerged, containing a bunch of frozen enemies like the Frost Nagwas and Shield Jellies. But most importantly, in this dungeon you can find a massive door which grants entrance to the newly released Amoxliath boss. The drop table of this boss holds four unique items, but the one we're going for in this video is the tooth half of a key, Moon Key, at a drop rate of 1 in 500, which if we do get, not only wins us the challenge for this video, but also allows us to open a brand new chest introduced with Varlamor part 2. And with the keys being pretty rare and hard to get, I'm really curious to see what this chest might hold. Before we can even access the boss, we have to complete the quest The Heart of Darkness, which I have all the requirements for, it doesn't seem to be a very difficult quest, so let's get going. And there it is, the final boss fight of the quest, the actual boss we're going to be doing for this on drop rates as well. I have a pretty scuffed setup with a Void Waker weapon right now, but shouldn't be too bad. Easiest boss fight of the century. I think it's a bit easier even during the quest, and I don't think after the quest it's going to be a very difficult boss. By the way, look at this absolutely insane fashionscape you get during the quest as well. New skilling fashionscape, maybe? But that's the quest completed. Let's go ahead and gear up. Because a Moxleath has a minus two to flat armor, the best weapons to use here are those with multiple hits at a time, and there's none better than the Scythe of Vitter, making this our final setup. We're also bringing the Burning Claws as a special attack, a Blood Amulet of Fury switch for some extra healing, Thralls, and finally an Ectoplasmator, as the boss counts as a Spectral and gives an additional 104 prayer experience per kill. A Moxleath has three main abilities, and luckily none of them are very difficult to deal with. Over the course of the fight, the boss will spawn these ice spikes around the arena, dealing around 15 damage to anyone standing on them when they activate. And after they are activated, some of them will leave damaging ice on the ground, taking rapidly for 8 to 10 damage if stood in. Both of these can be avoided simply by not standing in them, so stay on your toes. After a few attacks, the first special attack is used, which is either the rock ability, spawning 1 to 4 rocks, that all needs to be hit with a melee weapon and destroyed. If you do not do this, the boss will absorb them and heal itself. The other ability is a magic icicle shot directly at you at a slow pace, disabling your prayer and hitting you for semi-high damage unless you reactivate your protect from magic again. That's pretty much it. If you can deal with those abilities, you can defeat a Moxleath. Hey, first kill down and we get a frozen tier as well. These are guaranteed and they are used as charges to the teleport for this boss later on when we do get the necklace for that. And this is why I have the Blood Amulet of Fury, because basically all the damage here is avoidable, so if I take any damage, I can just switch to the Blood Amulet of Fury, heal myself to full, and I should be good for as long as I have prayer potions and super combats. Oh, and uh, if you're bringing Thralls, it's good to use them. We have the first Blessed Bone Shards coming in, 69 of them, nice. These are dropped in many places in Varlamor and can be turned into Prayer Experience, which we will do at the end. Already after 4KZ, I kind of had a full inventory, so I teleported out to bring way less food, I realized I don't need it. I also now added the Loot Tracker at the bottom of the screen. If there is one boss in this game I would recommend tile indicators on, it is definitely this one. It makes everything a lot clearer what tile you're moving to as you have to move a lot during this fight. And actually thinking about one of my friends who recently started playing old school runescape, this is probably a very good fight for him or anyone who is kind of new to bossing, because movement is quite a difficult part of runescape PVMing. So if you're out there, you don't have too much bossing experience, I would highly recommend this boss. Obviously with a small sample size at this point, but with my gear it seems like I'm getting around 40 seconds to 1 minute kills. And including banking and all that, I would assume you can get around 60 to 70 kills an hour. But of course this boss is not really meant for people with a Scythe of Vitter, so if you're coming here with lower gear, you can probably expect 40 to 50 kills an hour. Which is honestly not that bad, it's pretty fast. Oh this one has to be a personal best, it felt so fast! 40 seconds, okay, not as fast as I thought it would be, but still a personal best. Even though I think that's fast though, I'm sure the speedrunners of this game has probably got it down to like 20 seconds or something. But that is the end of the first actual real trip, I guess. We're out of Divine Combat Potions and we got 32 kills. I do think I can probably bring more Divine Combat Potions and more Prayer Potions as well, because I didn't really have to use any food with the Blood Fury. Oh, and of course, there is always a scoreboard outside the new bosses. Let's see what the fastest kill in the world is. I thought 20 seconds. It is... 
15. Oh my god. How is that even possible? They have to be bringing like Sarite crossbow, get the most insane special attacks, maybe even D class instead. That is crazy. And luckily, we have the answers, as the absolute beast Molgot Kirby has the kill recorded and uploaded, and with his permission, I can show you guys how it was done. First off, he is on a Slayer task for that 15% baseline damage increase. He uses Spellbox Swap to have both Vengeance and Thralls during the encounter, and he begins it by using a Sarat Crossbow special attack, dealing 112 damage. He stands in the Icicles to deal a Vengeance damage and recoil damage at the same time. He swaps to the Scythe of Vitter, hitting a 78, which follows up by a 79 Granite Maul special attack. He reuses Vengeance and sticks to his Scythe of Vitter, which hits extremely hard back to back. And finally, he finishes off the boss by lowering his own hit points to 1, equipping full Darox and slamming the boss for its final 82 hit points. I probably even missed something, but that's how insane the world records are for even easy bosses like this oh my god 40 second kill on 40 kc it's a sign it has to mean something i don't know what but something oh yes yes i was waiting for this the pendant of eight inerts this is the teleport that makes it a lot quicker to get to this boss it's not very rare it's one in 25 so we were actually kind of unlucky but that is such a great unlock for this grind Okay, I don't need that, but another pendant of 8s, only I think 8 KC after the first one. I would assume I can probably dismantle these for charges. Yeah, I can. Okay, 100 frozen tears, just like the Serix Talisman. I mean, I'm not complaining, just some free teleports. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Yep. Time to try out the amulet, let's go ahead and charge it, 346 charges, previously it was quite a long run, so let's see what we can teleport to, Twilight Temple, it seems really close compared to what I could get to before. Oh, it's this close, that's pretty much where the boss is at. Previously, I had to use the Quetzal system all the way to Quetzal George, or whatever the hell that name is, run all the way north here, and then to the statue I'm standing at right now, to get to the same spot I can teleport to instantly. Oh, we have the first elite clue scroll of the grind. I don't know the drop rate of this, unfortunately, as it still says unknown on the wiki. But judging by other releases recently, I would say that it's probably pretty rare. Oh, all the uniques are just raining in. The Glacial Temotlis, these are the new weapons introduced with this update. And they are crush weapons, so they're actually pretty good at this boss, because it's weak to crush. So if you do have these, or you can afford them, they're only like 130k, they're pretty good here. But me, I don't need this, I have the Scythe of Vitter, but let's go ahead and sell it, see if it's, uh, it's not even selling for 129k, so not too valuable, sadly. Really, the only hard part about this collection log will be the pet, because at 124kz, I already have everything completed, and the hardest item except for the pet is the Glacial Timotlis, which we just got at a 1 in 100. So if you're lucky and get the pet pretty early here, you can complete this log in no time. You know what the hardest part of this entire boss is, at least for me, it's inventory management. You get so many items from this boss, I have to juggle them on the ground if I want to pick everything up. Look how many items you get, how am I supposed to hold all of this? If you do bring high alchemy instead of thralls, of course you can alk all the rune items. But for me, because I want the fastest kills, bringing thralls is going to mean that inventory management is very difficult. Oh no, I just hit 1000 charges on my necklace, I cannot keep saving saving one inventory space by putting the frozen tears into the necklace, because 1000 is maximum. So on the note of inventory management, now I have another slot in my inventory I cannot use. That is very fun. Ah, tooth off of a key. I think that's on the rare drop table. But why is it untradeable? Wait, is that the actual item? I thought it would be called moon key. Did I just win? I did! No way! Okay, that was the biggest bait ever. I thought it was just a normal tooth half of a kit. Let's go! We did it! 179kc! But the grind is not quite over yet. We do have the tooth part of the key, but we still need the loop to finish the key. The loop can be obtained through various skilling activities on Varlamor, but the one I'm going for in this video is mining calcified rocks in the Camtora mine. The drop rate for this is currently unknown, but I will just park my character here, keep a mining XP tracker on, and see how long it actually takes. I actually had a bit of a chat with a guy standing right beside me now, and he said he started on 83 mining and is now 91. And in that time, he claimed to have got 17 moon loop half of a key. And I did some quick calculations with his statistics, and that means he got one loop every 183,000 mining experience. Which is honestly quite a lot, so hopefully we can get lucky and get it before that. 
Oh, there it is. We have it. I was completely AFK to the mining and we got 61,000 mining experience before we got the key piece. That is really lucky. But we now have everything to open the new chest. So let's go ahead and combine them and see what we can get from the chest. Very briefly before we open the chest, from the mining I actually got a lot of these blessed bone shards, more than I got from the actual boss, but let's go ahead and actually use all of them and see how much prayer we got. Okay, that is the last shard, so we got nearly 30,000 experience from mining and killing 179 Amoxliath, but that means including the Ectoplasmator XP we got from the boss itself, which was 18.6k, we got nearly 50,000 prayer experience on this grind, which is uh, not too bad. And here we are, we have both the key pieces, and here is the chest that is located right north of the Frost Nagwas, so if you want to do this yourself, you now know where it is. Let's go ahead and combine these keys for the Moon Key, and uh, I have honestly no idea really what can drop here. I don't think there's many people who have opened it. So let's just go ahead and see what we get. 250 splinters and a dragon stone. That is not very good. 160k for that. Uh, don't think it was worth it. But of course, it's not meant to be a main moneymaker. It's just meant to be some extra loot that you get when doing bossing and skilling in Varlamor. And I think it's a pretty cool addition. We only got one elite, of course, and maybe this is the chosen one. Third age? Oh my god. Okay, that is not third age, but that is a lot of items. New collection log slot, katana... Let's see how that looks. That that looks so good, honestly. I wish that was good. Also, 200 elite. So we did get the big casket, which is kind of cool. But uh, I don't think I'll ever use this, to be honest. Thank you all so much for watching. And maybe if I am crazy enough, in the future, I might make an undrop rate for this new chest. So if you want to be notified when that happens, make sure you're subscribed, like the video. And until next time, guys, take care.